Of the many sports pieces that Rolex offers, there is a watch that has always stirred my fascination in the two-tone genre. A watch that the community has gracefully named the Root Beer, one that has great ties to the 70s and 80s. A watch that I believe is one of the most exciting pieces that the family makes, but also one that is divisive and not appreciated nearly enough. We saw the introduction of the GMT Master alongside the Submariner. These two watches went in completely different directions, but were built on the same platform, each using a turnograph-style bezel, a beefy oyster case, some with larger crowns, some with luminova bezels. As a watch, the GMT line has always confused me, especially as we see just how it appears alongside the Submariner nowadays. The whole intended purpose of the GMT was to be a watch made for travelers, who could now embrace the elegance of air travel. So using a sports watch platform seems rather strange. At least in my mind, the GMT should have always been a watch that used more dress elements in its makeup. If we had to go back in time with the current lineup of pieces that we now see, I strongly believe that the Sky Dweller would have replaced the GMT as the iconic watch for that purpose during the time. If we remember just how popular date justs and day dates were back then, a watch like the Sky Dweller would have fitted perfectly in that genre, but I digress. The key reference that cemented the GMT line was the 1675, and with the watch as a base plate, the 16753 was a model that introduced two-tone to the GMT Master. For the 70s and the 80s, it was a watch that was perfectly suited for the time period. And the primary model was fitted with a black dial and a black bezel. Even to this day, we find variations of this piece seen in the 90s era GMT Master 2, reference 16713, and the more modern, most recent 116713. These watches all have that allure of steel and gold, and what separates them from the herd is that they are very understated and make for excellent everyday watches with the black configuration. And a watch like this feels more in line with the GMT as a more functional dress sports piece. But in tandem with the introduction of the two-tone 16753, another model was released, one with a brown bezel and brown sunburst dial. Within the line we saw two variations of the bezel, one that was fully brown and another that was half brown and the other half a more caramel color. And it was a watch that became well favored at the time. But nowadays, comparing the two models, as is normally the case, the simpler, more discreet option tends to always transcend the time period and manage to age more gracefully in the eyes of the majority. Many find the GMT root beer of the time to look garish, a symbol of its time. And even now, looking at it with its patina, two-tone bezel, it resembles the color of sepia and immediately evokes the feeling of a different time. The watch was phased out, remained dormant and became a watch that many enthusiasts bought as an avant-garde watch from the Rolex family. Then, we were all surprised a few years ago by the reintroduction of the Root Beer GMT Master II, reference 126711CHNR, a model that uses rose gold as its contrasting metal and has a much more toned down look in comparison to its vintage counterparts. So before looking at the different generations of pieces in detail, here is why I believe that we should all observe and consider the Root Beer GMT more as a watch. Today we take color for granted. We now have the ability to choose whatever color we would like for any product, and watches offer you pretty much any color in the spectrum. Keeping with the Rolex family, we have greens, blues, grapes, olives, and more often than not, black and white variations. Then we have spot colors of reds, blues, yellows, golds, the list goes on. But the color brown seems to be one that is not favored by the majority. The choice of black generally is considered and is chosen as the best. It has a great contrast against the skin, it stands out well, and when combined with the likes of green and blue, adds a nice combination to the wearing experience. The color is also universal, suits all skin colors, and works well with any kind of clothing choice, whether in suits or casuals. But the true irony is that brown is one of the most versatile colors for anyone, of any skin color or situation. What it has is a more toned down nature. It's not as stark as black, but at the same time is more visually complex as a color, offering a lot more variety in the color spectrum when being worn in different lighting scenarios. When you consider how often we pair the color brown to other objects, it's quite revealing. 
Brown straps on watches, brown shoes, trousers, jackets, upholstery. The color brown is very much universal, and we see it time and time again. But surprisingly, the color is not used often with watches, which I believe is a missed opportunity. Now returning to the 16753 root beer, this model, especially on the Jubilee, has always had my attention. It manages to do two things. Keeps itself contained and not overly expressive, like say a regular Pepsi GMT tends to do with its vibrant red and blue bezel, but at the same time is elegant, appears simple, but is also visually complex. It is difficult to sum up how the watch impresses upon you, but undoubtedly we would all consider this particular GMT differently. The brown tones of the dial and the bezel allows the watch to appear casual, and the camel color is then paired with the yellow gold. In many ways, I at least see this to be such a complete watch, one that has a very strange harmony to its makeup, exuberant but still manages to stay sober. The dial is also an outlier, one of the most striking color choices from that time period. With the Hulk and the Z-Blue Milgauss dials as exceptions, this tiger's eye finish is unbelievable. The color is so vibrant and expressive, some models were given matte dials in brown or black, and others had this amazing tobacco burst finish. Now granted, it may be overly ambitious, maybe too vibrant, but as a form of expression, this watch has such a depth to its character. It feels so typical of its time period, but stepping back and looking at it now, there was such an innovative approach taken to try something different. I can just see this watch pairing so well with a brown leather jacket today, and the color, I should emphasize again, really seems to resemble the word vintage better than many others. We move to the present day and the release of the newest root beer GMT pieces. I honestly feel that they are some of the best releases from the family in a long time. The watch is by no means loud, bright or in your face. Instead, even as a two-tone piece, it looks very casual. Nowadays, we can predict the safety measures that Rolex uses. They don't overstep boundaries like they did with some of the outlandish pieces from the 70s and 80s, like the 16753. Here we see the use of another black dial, a black bezel with a touch of brown, but one of the best moves was adding rose gold to the combination. And the best reasoning I could come up with is complementary colors. The soft browns and coppers create such a clean harmony that then combines with the steel and the black finish. There is a lot of depth to the watch's color palette, and when we consider that most of their popular sports pieces nowadays are either quite plain or contrast greatly, this root beer GMT seems so natural in the way it presents itself. The watch also pairs well as a fully rose gold piece, but the two-tone finish seems much more approachable. There is this regality that it has that I haven't seen with many other pieces in their current sports line. So as a complete watch, I believe that it would work excellently in any situation. It would work well in casuals or in a suit, but in its modern format, it is a watch that has a greater emphasis on sport than the older generations. What could this watch have done to it to improve its stance? I have a few suggestions. The first, I'm sure this will be divisive, but I have mentioned many times before that I believe the GMT deserves a Jubilee bracelet. Yes, I am in the camp that prefers the modern line of GMTs with Jubilees. It was always intended to be a more dress alternative watch to a sports piece like the Submariner, so as an option, I would suggest this watch be fitted with a Jubilee to harken back to the older references. But in its current state, this watch does look fantastic on an Oyster. And maybe the Jubilee would dress it up too much, taking it a bit too far and making it less practical as an everyday watch. Another addition would be to follow through with the color brown and use it on the dial. A darker gloss brown finish instead of black would help differentiate the piece even more from the current lineup, and I believe would also add more depth to the use of colors on the piece. But again, in its current state, it does seem to have a stance of its own. With most watches, I'm resolute with adjustments and changes, but this watch has me thinking through them. So that tells me that this watch in its current form has an impact on me in some way. And I will admit, this newer generation of root beer GMTs has me more interested than with the rest of what Rolex offers with their sports line of pieces. Bringing the old and the new together, it's surprising to see Rolex dip back into its past 
and use such references for their newest generation of pieces, and seeing them both together, I am drawn to them for different reasons. Where the newest generation is simple and less adventurous, just enough to appeal to the broader audience, the vintage piece separates the enthusiast from the casual watch person. You really have to have a love for Tiger's Eye, Tobacco Brown, Yellow Gold, Two-Tone Exuberance of the five-digit reference. But as for someone like us, the enthusiasts, they make for an excellent pairing. One to be worn more often and the other to be worn occasionally. In the end, both of these pieces stir an emotion. They use colors we seldom see on sports watches and ironically are some of the most casual looking pieces because of it. They are also by no means the most popular pieces in the family and I find that quite sad, at the same time pretty empowering. If you had to be wearing one of these pieces amongst the countless Hulks, Panda Daytonas, Batmans, Supermans, the root beer would have a presence that divides it from the crowd. A group of obscure watches that have been brought back into the modern lineup, watches with style and class, and ones that ultimately deserve your attention because of what they add to the individual.